Yes, what is up everyone? So I got a few things for you. One, my grandma passed away last night. It's a bit of a shock. We weren't expecting it. We knew that she was ill. It sucks because I lost my other grandma a few months ago, so I don't have any more grandmas. And that's a shame because um, grandmas, grandmas make you feel safe, you know? I didn't think I'd cry on YouTube. I guess I almost did. And I guess while we're here at this place of peak raw emotion, I just want to say that I know that you're feeling neglected, my YouTube community, by me. I'm aware of it. This Twitch stuff has just been pretty awesome. I love the immediacy of the interaction. So I say something and the audience responds in real time. And then you say something and I respond in real time. And I, I love it. I, I think it's great. And I still feel like there's a bit of a buffer on YouTube because I'm recording this right now and you're not gonna see it for a few hours later. Or you might wait and watch it 12 hours later and it loses that immediacy. Now, I'm not saying that I'm not gonna continue to post on YouTube, I definitely am. I'm just trying to work through that rhythm of posting on YouTube and posting on Twitch and trying to find that happy medium. So please stick with me. I'm trying to figure it out. Anyway, nothing cures my sadness better than throwing myself into something else. So let's get to it. It's previews and predictions, and we're gonna break down the match of the week, Arsenal versus Manchester United. And I'm just gonna say it, Arsenal are not gonna be viable contenders in any competition until they get a whole new back four. Mustafi, you shouldn't have signed that dude in the first place. Socrates, Monreal, Kolosinac, Kolosin, you guys know who I'm talking about. They're just not consistently good enough. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're not. Hector Bellerin, he seems to be distracted with what's happening off the field and how he's dressed, and unfortunately, he's a little bit hurt at the moment. Then Maitland Niles and Rob Holding, uh, a little bit too young, still trying to figure it out. And then you have Licksteiner and Koscielny who are either a little bit too old or a little bit too hurt or both. And then you add in that their stud midfielder who I really enjoy and think is a great player, Lucas Torreira is gonna be out because he got a red card in the North London Derby in their last league game. And the fact that their stud striker Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang has only scored one goal in his last seven games, which isn't good, which is probably why it's prompted Une Emery, the manager of Arsenal, to not start him and Lacazette at the same time recently, which is what they did at the beginning of the season and it didn't work. And regardless, it just feels like everything is starting to fall apart for Arsenal. But they get to play at home where they've won four straight matches, so that could only be considered a good thing until you remember that the last time that they played this week's opponent, Manchester United, which was less than two months ago at the Emirates, they lost three to one to get knocked out of the FA Cup. And United are coming into this one after a miraculous comeback in Paris that sees them through to the Champions League quarterfinals. So we could argue their confidence could be at an all time high this season, which is my way of saying that this could be the worst possible time to play them, especially when it appears that Arsenal's confidence is pretty low. Plus, if you take into consideration that the soon to be knighted United manager, Sir Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is undefeated away from home since taking over for Jose Mourinho. He's got nine wins in nine away games. It just feels like that's gonna be enough to tip the result in United's favor, especially since they have an extra day of rest as well. So, hmm, my prediction. If Manchester United start Eric Bailly, who was very poor against PSG, then I think that would give Arsenal a ton of chances because Bailly has a great knack for shutting off and losing focus at important moments. And then I think the game would end two to two. I love that scoreline. But if Bailly doesn't start, and I don't expect him to, but if he doesn't, and that's for sure, then I think United will win two to one, which will help solidify their hopes of finishing in the top four while most likely ruining Arsenal's hopes of doing the same. And I'm sorry, Gunners fans. It doesn't look good. And here's some other games I'll be keeping my eyes on this weekend. Oh yeah, brother. Give me some of that Hulk Hogan. Oh brother, 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 yeah. Brother, brother. Like the two matches for the two top teams in the Bundesliga as Borussia Dortmund, who sit on top of the league with 54 points, host Stuttgart, who are currently in the relegation zone. So on paper, the black and yellow should win this, but given their current form, where they've won only one out of their last eight games in all competitions, which has seen them get knocked out of the DFB Pokal and the Champions League, 
Who actually knows? I don't even know if they actually know. They have no idea. They're in a downward spiral. And as for Bayern Munich, who are also on 54 points, by the way, yes, that is right. Bayern are tied on top of the table with Dortmund. Well, they host a very good away from home Wolfsburg side, but I'm not really sure why I'm hyping this up at all because we all know what's gonna happen at the end of the season. Dortmund are gonna bottle it and Bayern Munich are gonna win the league again. And then I'm gonna be spying on Marseille versus Nice because I consider this to be the Mario Balotelli derby where Super Mario's current club Marseille take on his last club Nice. And honestly, I'm just here for his revenge and what goal celebration he's gonna do next. And not the fact that Marseille are clinging on to that last spot in Europe and Ligue 1 by one point and that Nice is only four points behind them so that this is a massive game. I'm only here for the goal celebration. And then I'll be keeping these things key and peeled on Levante versus Villarreal because when I think of Villarreal, I think of them as that next tier of talent in La Liga alongside Sevilla and Valencia and outside of Barcelona and Real Madrid and Atletico Madrid. But one of the top six for sure. So you can imagine my surprise when I looked at the table recently and I saw them in the relegation zone and that they've only won four out of 26 league matches this season. What? is happening with Villarreal that's unacceptable. So I'm very curious to see how they do in this match because I'm nervous for them. And then, y entonces, I'm gonna have these things glued to Monterrey versus Tigres because it's one of the best derbies in all of Mexico. And they're currently two of the best teams in Mexico and both favorites to win the CONCACAF Champions League this season. So we all need to make time for this one because, and I don't know how you say this in Spanish, como se dice, it's gonna be lit fam. And then it'll be focused on Sampdoria versus Atalanta because not only is this a game between two sides who are in the middle of five teams who are separated by five points who are battling it out for the last two spots in Europe. It also boasts two of the top scorers in Syria in Sampdoria's Fabio, Fabio, why would I say Fabio? It's Fabio. You know that dreamy guy that never wears a shirt, Fabio? Well, it's a different Fabio and his last name is Quagriarella. Quagriarella, I can't, my lips don't move that way. And it's also gonna feature Adelanta's Duvan Zapata. And I really enjoy watching players in top, top form, so hopefully they don't disappoint. And then finally, saving the best for last, I am definitely 100% making time for FC Dallas versus the LA Galaxy because I don't know if you saw this or not, but FC Dallas absolutely roasted Zlatan on Twitter. Take a look. I'll do them the favor and I'll break every record there is. So. <laughs> even the records I don't even know about, I'll break them also. <laughs> He's currently ranked 170th in all-time MLS goals. He'd need 122 more this year. LOL. He didn't even lead one major stat in 2018. Nice try, Slaton. <laughs> Yeah, that was pretty good, so I want to see how Zlatan responds. Anyway, that is it. That is all I got, so thank you for your support. As always, it means a lot. Be on the lookout for a new career mode that's dropping very soon. Hashtag Eno in. And predict the right score for Arsenal versus Manchester United. And if you get it exactly right, you'll be entered to win some Warm Baller stickers. Yeah, pretty sweet, right? And in fact, I think I owe stickers to some other people. I'll follow up on that. Anyway, have a good or bad weekend, everyone. Later!